One question that I see time and time again put towards musicians is what is your creative process? So I thought I would ask five independent musicians that exact question. What is your creative process? Let's find out what they told me. Talked a little bit about your creative, you've talked a lot about your creative process actually, which is really interesting. 10 minute rule, never heard of that one before. Yeah, that's that was an absolute staple. 10 minutes, time yourself, 10 minutes, forget it if it doesn't happen. You time yourself, you've got a timer next to you. And you, you well, you it's look. like just on your watch. It's just you look, at, <laughs> you look at your watch. Why did you come up with that? Because that's just when the good stuff happened within that five to 10 minute window. And if it's not going to happen then, it probably isn't. You're just going to force it. And okay. that's, just, that's just pointless. Uh, yeah, I do route everything through. I've got a Tascam. Um, four track or six track I think um so I uh, rooted everything through that for the last EP but be- the two before that I just put it all through the preamp of the um reel to reel so you do get that analog feel you do get a bit of hiss coming with it but you can sort of EQ that out but I also, also put restrictions in my way where I only use eight tracks right because I'm a cheapskate so I've only got like uh Ableton light lots so of I've, I've only got eight tracks which is yeah, and my yeah. laptop is falling apart and it's about 12 years old. So we can't deal with any more than eight tracks. Uh, okay. Um, so I but just... Doug, but Doug, you have got like, you have got 15 Chase Bliss pedals. So you, you're hardly yeah. lit too limited, are you? <laughs> yeah, that's true. Yeah, they they, they help me out no end. But um, yeah, just the, the routing, everything everything through the tape player, um, yeah. that helps just give you that warmth. Wouldn't otherwise get going straight out of a pedal. <laughs> Basically. Well, <laughs> like when we started writing... Um, I would write lyrics um, just in like my notes, like app on my phone, or if I have a notebook available, um, I'll just write down ideas. And um, when we agreed to like, to start writing for Grey Bloom, um, that's when I took like song structures a little bit more seriously and just like figuring out the lyrics and like, like where's the verse gonna be, where's the chorus gonna be. I don't know, just like whenever I write the words, I look for like imagery and metaphor of, you know, like if this word was a sa- was a sound, what would that sound be? Do you start with lyrics and then you create a sound from lyrics? Yes. Yes. Ah, that's really Every interesting. song has been written that way. Yeah. That's really interesting. That's kind yeah. of like the reverse of most bands with lyrics. In. Yeah. I'm yeah. open to the other side. Like if Aaron ever <laughs> has a riff or like a melody in mind, I'm very open to doing that direction yeah. as well. But with this, I think because I was in such a writing, like a groove with writing and I knew it, like the concept of like whatever album that we released, I was focused on like those certain themes. And I was like, here's kind of what I'm imagining when I'm writing these words and what I'm hearing. And I wanted like the EP to kind of just be an assortment of sounds. Um, so that way we can learn and experiment and find what is our unique sound yeah. and challenge our skills as well, um, yeah. which it definitely did. And like, I, I feel like we definitely have grown already through the writing process. Uh, Aaron, how is that to have someone sort of not dictate is part I'm sure it's not, well, maybe it is like <laughs> that way. I don't know. <laughs> But to almost give you, you know, that vision and imagery and then you go and sort of pull some music together that fits that. I actually enjoy it and appreciate it a lot. Like, I feel yeah. like otherwise I would just kind of be floating in limbo. And I mean, obviously I've written songs that way before where I'll get a riff or an idea or a progression and I'll just go from there. But it's very helpful to have the guidance from her because, you know, because it's not an instrumental project, like the lyrics are very important and I do want the sound to like mm. support yeah. the lyrics and like the yeah. concept and the yeah. message of each song. Right. So it's very, it's been very, very helpful. Um, most of the songs, I think all of them really, except for Moonglade, yeah. all, all of the other four songs, when she sent me lyrics, she had with each little section, like, this is what I want to hear right here. And this is where I hear this building. And like, this is where I hear it opening up into wow. like this big, like heavy section. Yeah. So then that gave me like a great framework. I didn't feel boxed in at all, yeah. but I definitely had like a map sort of guiding yeah. me as I would like write my parts and just following, yeah. following that direction. Yeah, yeah. Great question. Um, so I usually, um, write the, probably the guitar part first and then guitar layers. Like I'll just do most of the guitar parts 
lately, actually on my latest album, I, I would send it to the drummer before I recorded bass. And the reason is as a bass player, I love following the drums. So I don't necessarily want to choose the beat myself, like mm-hmm. the exact rhythm uh, of what the drums are going to be doing. Um, I have an idea, of course, of the, the progression of, you know, it's going to follow the guitars too, but um, I'll usually record the guitars, send it to a drummer, the drummer sends it back, and then I record bass. Um, if I can get like a relatively clean recording the first time, like while I'm re- writing it, and I actually do, like as I write the music, I'm, I'm recording at the same yeah. time. So yeah. I have my headphones in, I have Logic on, and I try something. And if I like it, I record it. If it's good enough, that's the final take because I don't like tracking and re-recording things. Um, but sometimes, um, especially on some of my faster songs, like the pop punk songs, or if there's like a lead guitar, I'm not great at guitar. So I may have to practice that line, you know, for weeks um, in order to be actually to be able to play it through. So sometimes with re- like writing it, I write little parts at a time and I just record little clips. And then I practice that part for a couple of weeks. Yeah. Um, so that I can retrack it later. So that's kind of the process of recording. Um, I definitely do retrack probably like rhythm guitars and um, certain parts, like if they're messy, I, I have to retrack them. So I kind of do that at the end. And then I do send all my songs, the Oriana songs to my friend, Jose uh, from Arizona. We used to be in a band together and he mixes and masters everything. So um, I'd like to learn a little bit about mixing and mastering, but as we've talked about, I'm pretty busy already. So yeah. um, it's kind of a lower priority. I think it would be fun, but I think right now the most fun for me is writing <laughs> and recording. So if I can free up more of my time to do that fun yeah. stuff. Then, you, know. you might have to give up the drums to do that, Jill, because I don't I know. know if you can do both. It's uh, <laughs> it's a rabbit hole at which you, I don't think you ever come out of, unfortunately, once you go, go too far into it. Um, artwork and stuff like that. Do you do that yourself or do you work with anyone? Yeah, sort of. Um, so the first uh, couple albums and my um, some of my like EPs and stuff. Um, sometimes I'll design the the artwork myself. So I did paint um, the cover for the first two Oriana albums, the Desert and Sunrise Gold. Um, my mother in law is a watercolor painter. She taught me how to paint, so I just I did those. Awesome. Um, and then um, I sent to my friend Greg at the Sound Camp um, to help me edit, kind of just the the words and the kind of the design of the actual artwork. Um, and sometimes I do like the EPs and stuff on my own, just on online. Um, and then my latest one for Dubai, I took that picture while I was at Expo. It's a picture of El Wassel, the dome. Um, and then I took a bunch of pictures and I was like, hopefully one of these can be my, my album art. And I sent it to uh, our friend, Adam Dodson, who um, actually put together kind of the artwork and the text and everything to make it look really nice. So Awesome. Yeah, a little bit good both. Choice. Good choice. Didn't realize that. That's a good choice. Though. Yeah. What would your creative process be? Where would you start and how would you transition through to a song fully fleshed out idea? Very good question. One of the ways I typically start stuff is I just spend a lot of time just playing without like any expectation of recording anything. Somehow like a riff or something will just, I'll be noodling and it'll stick and be like, oh, that's, that's pretty cool. And I'll keep playing it and I'll try to work on it. I found that like if I do something for a few days or a couple of weeks and I keep coming back to it, that means it's probably something that's worth finishing. Like it's Mm -hmm. getting stuck in my head. So it'll potentially get stuck in other people's heads. Are you almost, I need to want to play this again. And like, like when I'm sitting on my sofa watching TV, I like the sound of what I was playing an hour ago. And that means therefore I need to continue with it. Or is there a different reason why you do that? No, I think that's, that's a pretty good description. Um, so like my, my day job is a product designer for, uh, software and a big, uh, an important part of that role is being able to design something, get feedback and iterate on it. And just like, it's not just like, here's the first thing that comes out. We're going to ship it off to customers. That I think is, is more of my preferred approach to music as well. I typically try to start wide, um, and get like a basic arrangement of a song, usually with rhythm guitars, like clean and, and uh, distorted guitars. Like to me, like once I have that arrangement of start to finish, that's when I can start like hearing more things and layers. Mm-hmm. Whereas a lot of people I see kind of go more like chunk by chunk. Like they will be like guitar uh, leads, synth, drums, bass for this section. And then same thing for the next section where I was more, I'm more like layers. Yeah. Interesting. Um, and I'll often like, as I'm going through that process, I'll just bounce whatever I have to 
uh, you know, to an MP3 and I'll listen to it like when I'm taking my dog for a walk or something. And so I can hear, I can listen to it and be like, okay, I think it needs something here or like this part, these, they sounded like these two parts sounded good together when I was first writing it. But now that I'm listening back to it, I'm like, eh, they don't, they're kind of conflicting or something like that. Um, I'd say my writing method and my recording method are not your conventional. I'm going to sit down and write a song. I'm kind of all over the place at times. So I typically will start with a riff that I like on guitar, maybe 30 seconds of it. I'll play it to a click track. I'll record it. And then I'll sit at the drums and I will write the, I will write like 10 minutes of drums just to that riff. And then I'll re I'll rearrange it essentially tons of different variations of beats and fills that are to that same BPM to a click yeah. track. Yeah. And yeah. And then as soon as I rearrange it, I'll actually go record the drums in the arrangement that they are. And then I'll record the guitars. Um, I usually do the drums, rhythm guitars, um, some lead guitars, wherever I want to, wherever I hear it in my head. And then yeah. uh, bass usually comes last for me. Yeah, that's, that's then, the way it should be. Bass is always last. <laughs> no, only joking. You've got, um, you've mentioned your room that's behind. Don't need to obviously show us now, but what's the setup like that you've got in there? Okay. Um, so it's actually at my house. Um, we have a, we have a ranch house. So like it's, it's a long ways. Um, the whole basement is the size of the house, which is beautiful, which immediately to me, when we bought the house, I was like, yep, that's, that's, that's all I need. That's, that's my checklist. <laughs> I bought a lot of studio foam and made it a little more acoustically treated. Um, the drums they're mic'd up. There are mics for every drum. There's overhead mics and there are three room mics spread out across the room there's a, there's a mono room mic across from the drums and then there's two stereo room mics about 15 feet from the drums on each side on each wall nice uh where i'm sitting is really like the control hub um i have my studio monitors i have my pedals for my guitars which i know you love the way i like i work you know your typical nine to five well in my case seven thirty to four <laughs> um i would work on things after work once in a while if i had time like if there's a day that that I got done working and there was just something I wanted to get out, you know, I would eat dinner. And then I would say, Hey, I'm going to go down a little bit. Saturday and Sundays are really my big time for it. like Saturday mornings and Sunday mornings. Like I would, I'm, as you know, I'm up early every day anyway. Yeah. yeah. So I would be done with my, you know, my, my routine in the morning. And then from like 8am until like maybe one o'clock in the afternoon. Um, you mentioned Rob a few times that, um, you're clearly a structured guy. You've clearly got a lo load of drive and motivation. I think that's obvious to anyone listening to you now. Uh, you've talked about your early morning routines. You get up early, you do your thing. What 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 does that include? About 4 o'clock, 4.30 in the morning, just about every day. <laughs> so people are probably like, what the hell are you doing? Um, I get up, I go for a run, and that is actually my time to like catch up on music. Like music that other people are releasing or favorite bands – um, cause I'm out there for about an hour. I run about seven miles or so. Um, don't know how many kilometers that is. <laughs> well, no, we're but, miles. I, I, we're miles. Oh, you're, you're miles out there. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. I, I did not know that. <laughs> um, seven miles, um, every morning, about an hour. So what time are you in bed then? What time do you go to sleep? Eh, sometimes like nine 30. Yeah. 10 okay. PM if, if, I mean, some nights I'm, I'm tired from work, like work, work can be exhausting. So like I'll be done at work at four o'clock, eat dinner, and just chill on the couch. We'll watch some TV, Netflix or whatever, and then pass out at like eight <laughs> yeah, some yeah. nights. All right, 9.30 usually, 9.30, 10 o'clock. I'll bat it again tomorrow morning. I'm just checking you're getting enough sleep, Rob. That's what I'm doing there. So <laughs> I'm just worried about you. It feels like there's a theme, right? That you're very, again, you're very like focused. You're, you know what you want and you go, you just commit and go for it. And I think, I think that comes through. Would you, do you feel that yourself? Yeah, I do at times. Some days I feel lazy. Like if I have a day where I just don't want to run and I don't I'm like, I'm so lazy. But then I, <laughs> I, then I look back and I'm like, I can't be that lazy. I've been running like this for like the last 10 years. So it's all relative. There's days like that. It, it, you kind of get the feeling like that you're not doing enough. Like, even if you are doing so much extra, like I get like that with my work too. Like, I feel like I'm not doing enough, but like, I should be doing more. I should be doing more. So you constantly push. I mean, it, it does get to a point though where you, where you burn out. So you got to be yeah. careful. If you want to see any of the other Meet the Musician episodes in this series, then I'll link some here. And of course, if you would do me the pleasure of subscribing and hitting that bell for notifications, then I'd love to see you here back on the channel in future. Thank you for watching.